All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kev. I'm your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 91. And today I will be examining the Lost Pyramid of Dashur, an extremely compelling site with prolific indications of its original function. And I will also be explaining an ancient lifting technology that allows one man to easily lift massive stones. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And the site that I will be discussing today is located here, just south of the Red and Bent Pyramids of Dashur. And you can see the Red Pyramid here, the Bent Pyramid here, and the Black Pyramid here. And I always notice that on Google Maps, the Bent Pyramid is also labeled as Pyramid Blanca, which means the White Pyramid. So we have the Black, the White, and the Red. And although these are modern names, I do believe that this may have been adapted from the original nomenclature used to describe their function. As some of you that may have been following my work from the very beginning may recall that the black, the white, and the red are the colors of the three stages of alchemical transformation described by medieval alchemists used to indicate different stages of a chemical reaction process. We have the black or the negredo, the white, or the albedo, and the red, or the rubedo, which is exactly what was occurring within each one of these colossal structures. And here are the fragmented remains of the quote-unquote lost pyramid. And here, just to the north, a very unusual adjacent mud brick structure, both perched on the precipice of this immense depression to the west that you will see in just a moment. Now, this is what the structure looked like prior to the modern excavation in 2017. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, this completely forgotten site was just recently, quote unquote, discovered and investigated for the first time only six years ago. And you can see here the eastern shaft, a huge change in configuration from almost every other site that has a shaft on the northern side of the pyramid. This one coming in from the east with some step-like features here that I will explain shortly. And you can see at this point, this area here with the two conduits and the entire southern half of the structure is still covered in sand and rubble. And looking here from a vantage point on the northern side, the southern and western sides of the site are still covered with sand and rubble prior to the excavation. And this picture here was taken midway through the excavation. And you can now see that the sand is fully removed, exposing the rest of this dual conduit system here. This trough on the eastern side of the primary chamber and this cavity here leading toward the primary chamber. And then they discovered this massive piece of red granite laying atop an unopened quote unquote burial chamber. This image coming from the Smithsonian Channel that documented this entire excavation and the live opening of this quote unquote burial chamber that was supposed to be the first unopened pyramid tomb in which they would find a pharaonic burial. So at this point, you may be asking yourself, how did they lift? this massive piece of stone to get inside of this chamber. Surely they must have used sophisticated modern lifting equipment and powerful cranes to raise this block of red granite, right? Nope, this is how they did it, with an A-frame and a compound pulley system. This is the secret 
of ancient lifting technology, ladies and gentlemen. No lost ancient high technology required, just the knowledge of physics and the magic of a compound pulley system. And with this simple setup, they were able to easily lift this huge piece of granite to open this sealed chamber and access the inside. And just guess how many people it took to lift this piece of stone. One, one man operating the compound pulley system was able to raise this piece of granite. This is how it was done today, and this is how it was done in the ancient times. Yes, this ancient civilization had machines and equipment, but they were simple machines designed with basic physics. Even the operation of the Egyptian pyramids, as I have described in the production of chemicals, works on these exact same principles, very simple physics and basic chemistry. But the results of applying this knowledge are absolutely miraculous. And I'll put a link to the four minute video from the Smithsonian channel in the video description below. So you can see one guy lifting this piece of stone and the extremely disappointed look on the faces of the excavation team when they opened this chamber and found what they describe as evidence of quote unquote ancient tomb raiding. So as always, once no burial or treasure was found, the excavations were stopped and the site was completely abandoned and forgotten until now. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new sixth degree green lion logo, the fifth degree central pyramid hydrochloric acid logo, the newly released second edition print of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies of the original first edition purple orchid paper print are also now available at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website and from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much. All right, now here is a picture of the perplexing mud brick structure adjacent to the Lost Pyramid site on the northern side. And it is different than most that I've seen around Egypt as the edges of this structure are curved, giving it a very unusual shape. And on the back side of this structure, there's a heap of sand and mud brick rubble and a conduit leading out toward the depression that you can see here. And this is the lost pyramid site over here and the termination of this mud brick conduit. Dumping out over the edge into this colossal pit. And here, is the eastern shaft of the Lost Pyramid itself. And these cutouts originally held metal clamps that were used to join these blocks together. So they were not only mortared together, but were also secured internally using this metal clamp system, which of course, all of these have now been removed. And here, looking down into the eastern shaft that has these step-like features that we saw in the original excavation photos that are now covered back in sand. And these are not steps. They are only a few inches deep and very, very small. Ladies and gentlemen, these are a ratchet locking mechanism for the Eastern pump. So as the pump slid down the shaft, it locked into place with each step, ensuring that it would not be forced back up the shaft locking and containing the internal pressure within the structure. And another very unusual point about the configuration of this pyramid site is that the eastern shaft does not lead directly to the quote unquote burial chamber. If this was a burial, the entrance would lead to the main chamber so that you could bring your body directly into its final resting place. However, it stops here at what appears to be a dead end. And remember, this subterranean area here was originally covered with a pyramid or at least a mastaba of some sort. So once you get to the bottom of this shaft, how do you get to the primary chamber? You can't. This is a blatant example of the function of this structure that is in direct conflict with the conventional interpretation. 
So this is the area here that I was just referring to at the bottom of the pump shaft. It is a completely dead end. And all of this area here was originally covered by a structure above it. So there is no way to get from here over to the primary chamber located over here. But you will notice that there are some conduits leading up the side that are lined in cement, an indication that they originally housed some metal piping like we just saw at the Pyramid of Sahure in episode 80. So people can't access or move around inside of this structure, but fluids absolutely can. And there is evidence of a pit down here at the bottom of the eastern pump shaft and a component that ran along this red granite housing here into this cavity that I will be presenting in a later episode. And here is another angle showing all of the features in this area. The eastern pump shaft with the locking ratchet mechanism leading down here. A massive piece of red granite. The pit leading down here, which is in the exact same location as the other water inlet pits that I have discovered in the Red Pyramid, the Pyramid of Winis, the Pyramid of Teddy, and most recently in the final Pyramid of Giza that I just showed in the last Sunday site visit. All in the exact same location at the bottom of the pump shaft, and they most likely all have the same function, to start filling the system with water. And then there's this component here, this red granite housing leading into this cavity, and this dual conduit system here, and this unusual hole in the center right here. Over here, more internal metal clamps, which are found all over the site. Next up, an image looking into the primary chamber with this huge lifted piece of red granite that was raised to open this chamber. And you can see here that this piece of red granite is now seated on some wooden railroad ties holding it up. This lower section of the chamber was excavated from a single piece of red granite. This upper is a separate piece. And this piece at the back of the chamber is red quartzite, which you can see here from the outside. So these two pieces are red granite, and this one is red quartzite, the same piece as we just saw at the back of the internal chamber. Here is a very unusual tubular drill hole. However, this hole does not go straight down. It curves down into the stone, which is extremely interesting. And here, more metal clamps, and there are two troughs on each side of the primary chamber one here on the eastern side, and one here on the western side. This is the trough on the eastern side, and it appears to have been connected into the dual conduit system. So here's an image prior to the excavation showing the dual conduits running in this direction, and here is that eastern trough still completely filled with sand. So there is definitely a functional connection between these two components of the pyramid system. And the western trough here. And there is a pit at the end of each trough that leads down into a cavity surrounding the primary chamber. And more metal clamps here. And the placement of these clamps are indications to me of areas that needed the most reinforcement to contain the internal pressure of the system. Some areas having single clamps and the area near this trough and pit system having a dual clamp. And here is the immense depression, maybe 20 feet away from the pyramid site, which has connections not only to floods, which would have brought water directly up to the pyramid system, but also quarrying and mining. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, that these pyramids and ancient mining and metallurgy go hand in hand. So it is no surprise to me that we find a mud brick structure 
that could have been a smelting site and a reactor that could have been producing chemicals that were utilized in the mining and extraction process directly next to this immense source of raw materials. So this is one of the most spectacular and perplexing sites in Egypt that is absolutely teeming with indications of function. And you can see here the stunning view looking north toward the ancient chemical manufacturing plants of the Bent Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, and the Black Pyramids of Dashur. And this is just the tip of the iceberg regarding this quote unquote lost pyramid site. And I have a whole lot more in store coming up soon. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 91, The Lost Pyramid of Dashur. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And coming up here on the channel, a weekend full of content featuring a very special Saturday edition, Living in Egypt Part 3, My Egyptian Street Cat Family. And then Sunday Site Visit 19. So if this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell. Like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel. TheLandofChem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.